Hi friends, welcome to the part 12 of this playlist. This is a free part, but I would request you to click the join button and become at least cloud cuddle. So I have been in the initial weeks posting videos and I have given access to cloud soldier membership as well. But going forward from today onwards, I will be giving access only to people with cloud cuddle and cloud ninja members. So if you have not subscribe to this channel please hit the subscribe button and do become a member because that will give you access to so many different questions these are all real certification questions i explain the concepts i explain the options i help you understand why one option is preferred over the other and it will give you access to plethora of knowledge primarily focused on cloud certifications now this is a question which i explained in my previous part you can visit that the answer was option b for detailed explanations, please refer to the previous part. Let me take you to a brand new question. So this is this is one of the questions which is very interesting question. So what is happening here is, I mean, you can pause the video, read it carefully, but let me explain you the story here. See, they, they have some instrumentation data. That data is coming every day. Where it is stored, it is stored on premises. And now what you want to do, you want to send it to S3 bucket. Simple question. Okay, why you want to send it to S3 bucket? Because there are additional systems that need this data to provide critical near right near real time analytics okay so this is very important so what is the requirement here i need a secure transfer to happen considering the sensitivity of the data and i want a most reliable data transfer so what should i use should i use data sync now what is data sync see first of all data sync is not a data transfer it is primarily used for migrating the data from on premises to cloud so this is what it helps you with the data sync can copy to and from it can copy from nfs servers smbs sdfs object stores and so on blah 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 why we use it we use it for data migration or archiving of cold data or if you want to move the data for protecting the data to s3 buckets that is what the use case says see data sync is perfectly fine my problem here is it is going to do this over public internet and if they are saying that the data is considered sensitive i would not use public internet that's why this option is wrong so I would mark this incorrect. Let us scan option C and D first. C, C and D are purely data migration services. What is data migration service used for? To migrate the database. This is the primary use case. So in this question, do we want to migrate the databases? Because migration service is all about migrating the databases. In our question, there is no mention of any database. They are looking to migrate the files from on-premises to S3 buckets. So that's why both these options these are wrong whether it be public internet or direct connect so these two are wrong now we are just left with option b so option b what it suggests is you should use data sync over direct connect yes so data sync we have already established that this is the path forward because this is used for online data transfer services between on premises and cloud and it can copy to a variety of data sources it can be object stores hadoop stfs nfs smb and so on and it can also do it on efs sfx uh, sorry fsx and so on but we have to do it over the direct connect because direct connect is very secure because we have to do a uh, data which is sensitive data so you use direct connect it is a, going to establish a dedicated connection between on premises and your uh, aws data centers so you will get almost increased bandwidth throughput and it is very safe okay so this would be my final answer we will lock this let us look at question 51 you can pause this and read it carefully see there is a company it is developing an application which will provide statistics and how it provides via a rest api so anybody who wants to get this statistics they can fire a api command and call the api and get the data sets this is how most of the third party applications whether it is currency forecasting or currency conversion applications etc all work this way so that is just a, a crux of it but what is actually required is you want to organize the data in an easy html format you want to first format it into html format and then send this to the various email addresses so what we know for sure is we want an email service so for email service there are two options for email there are two options in aws either you can use sns this will help you with the push notifications pub and sub services and then you have scalable email communications with the, to the customers if you want to send emails in bulk and etc primarily focus on emails then ses is the service we should use this is meant for purely this purpose to send emails to the customers okay so now i have established that whichever option which is using ses is my is my answer the first answer so what i will do is i will prefer ses over sns because ses is primarily meant for sending emails so i got my first answer 
and I am also able to mark option E as incorrect because it is making use of SNS. Now, apart from this, what else would be required? So, A says that you have to configure the application to send the data to data firo. So, there is no need of real time analytics here. See, Kinesis is all about real time data collection. It can be through real time streams into data lakes, warehouses, and analytics services. Our question is not talking anything about real time analytics. So, we will cross this. This is not our answer. Now, we are left with two options. Both are using making use of event bridge. We have to use event bridge because we will have to organize and send the data. We have to do some sort of data processing to call the REST APIs. So using event bridge, we will schedule this event which will uh, invoke either a glue job or lambda. So now what will happen is if you invoke a glue job, glue is a primary ETL service, extraction, transformation and loading. This is a ETL service which is available from AWS. Now there is no need of using a glue service here, ETL service because the same function can be executed through Lambda here. Hence in this case we will strike this option and I have option D as my answer. Now you might choose why, tell me that why Lambda. You might say hey Lambda auto kills itself after 15 minutes, any processing that takes more than 15 minutes, Lambda should not be used. You are perfectly correct my friend. In this case, we are using Lambda only to activate the REST API. There is no processing to be happened by the Lambda. It will be only triggering the REST API. That's all. That's why it is going to query the application for the data applications API through the API. The, it will just call the API. The API will run and fetch the data for you. The Lambda function is not going to fetch the data for you. That's why this is correct. Putting glue in this case will be an overkill because you just have to call the API. So glue will be cheap, uh, costlier. Lambda would be cheaper. Lambda is dirt cheap. So these two options are my final answers. Now folks, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please hit the subscribe button. I would strongly recommend you to become a member, click the join button and at least join Cloud Kernel because in the initial weeks, I have posted the videos which are accessible to Cloud Soldiers, but all the complex questions and etc. is meant to be posted under Cloud Kernel or Cloud Ninja. So at least by Cloud Kernel, that will give you access to a lot of certification contents. For any questions related to data analytics and advanced certifications, Cloud Ninja would be apt because I would be posting some content there as well. But it will be focused. It will be focused on advanced certifications like data analytics or uh, certified architect professional and so on. So, folks, see you in the next part shortly.